Hi. Hi. Good. Good. By the way, what mic are you using? It's really clear. Uh, that's uh, that's a sure SM57. Oh, okay. Uh, I have one of those actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't be bothered to connect it to my laptop. It's uh, yeah, it's a bit of a hassle. But... Fields on this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, once you got it set up, it's like yeah, it's, uh, mic stand. Fixed there, always there. <laughs> All right, let me put the meaning notes in the chat so people can sign in. Hello, everyone. Hello. Love your background, by the way. Is, is that the, the it, it looks like the fields of Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where I found it on um, Unsplash. was a good site to get uh, uh, free to use uh, uh, images. End up being good for Zoom backgrounds. Awesome. All right. So for those who joined, uh, I've put in the meeting link in the chat. Um, please go in and put your attendance in. And uh, we, uh, if we could, um, if anyone wants to volunteer for Scribe, that would be great. Okay, let me put it in again. Um, Paul, are you on the line? Yeah, we just had an internal meeting. He might be running a few minutes late. I'll ping him and see where he's at. This is Mark here from our... Okay. Hey, hey, Mark. Hello, hello. Hello. He, he mentioned that he's having trouble logging in, um, which is not new. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you need an account, but it's, you don't have to. There isn't a password. Okay, so I guess since we are waiting for Paul to to, to connect to Zoom, um, let's um, go through some check-ins. I think we have a couple of new folks on the call. So if you, you want to do an introduction, that would be great. Um, right. Please. Okay, uh, this is Mark here, Mark Minier. Uh, I'm joining from ARM. I'm part of the uh, software ecosystem development group at ARM. And I'm working with a number of collaborators in the industry around the project that's going to be pitched today. Paul is our technical lead on that project. The project's called Parsect. Uh, Justin Cormack is quite familiar with that project, having uh, been part of the founding group at Docker, where I originally started as well. So I've been at ARM for about five weeks now. And prior to this, I was at Docker working alongside Justin uh, in a business development role. So happy to be here and I actually hope to attend uh, these sessions a little more in the uh, future. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mark. So Wayne Haber, uh, in, in, on one of the security teams at uh, GitLab and actually similar to Mark, this is, this, is, uh, one of my, this is my first meeting and I plan to attend uh, future ones. If I can contribute, I'm just, uh, GitLab is really uh, 
happy to uh, take advantage of CNCF initiatives and we want to give back as well. So I'm just kind of listening in today to learn. Great. Thanks, Wayne. Um, guess I'll go next. I'm Jonathan Altman from Capital One. Uh, I am uh, here to start getting up to speed on the security SIG and um, uh, largely under the guise of working on Cloud Custodian. Awesome. I, are you working? Um, I think there was something on um, security assessments for that, but I'm not sure what the Justin cat box is on. Yeah. Yeah, still yeah. in the process. <laughs> Yep. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll figure that out. <laughs> I, 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 well, and, and specifically, one of the things I'm trying to work on is uh, nailing down that security assessment documentation. Okay. So. Yeah. Great. Uh, I, I think just Justin is um, overseeing that, but I he either has issues with joining Zoom or something again. So. Yes, I'm dialed in. So. Oh, okay. Okay. This would be muted. Okay. Do we have Howard yet? Is he in? All right. I'm going to post in um, the, the meeting notes again for those that just joined in. Um, please put your name on the attendance. And uh, we're doing check-ins right now. So if you're new and want to introduce yourself, um, um, feel free to go ahead. And thank you, Vinay, for, for volunteering to scribe for us. By the way, Mark, um, do you have a copy of the slides you think you'll be able to start off? Um, or shall we wait a little bit more for, for Harvard? Yeah, that's a good question. We were, uh, I think there were some last minute edits that Paul has. Um, if not, I think the GitHub page has a lot of information as well. We could pull that up if, uh, if it helps. Let me take a quick look here, see what I got. So next week is also going to be a working session. Um, I think um, we are going to be talking about the security landscape too. And if you have any topics that you want to discuss, just add them to the uh, next week's agenda. I'm just coordinating with Paul. I, I might try to share the presentation and he'll dial in by phone. He's having a hard time. I guess the meeting's not letting him join in is what he's getting as a message. So he'll try dialing in and if he does, we'll be able to run the slide deck from my PC. Okay. They're trying to get in but through the web client. I know Capos has had uh, issues with, with, uh, with that, with the latest changes. So do you recommend that he downloads the client itself as opposed to trying to run from the web? I do. If you're okay with the security uh, considerations that uh, installing the Zoom client entails, um, that will definitely give you the, the best uh, experience. 
and we do use that across the scenes, yeah. That's that's what I had to do, Mark. This is Reed. I had to go through the web client. So our arms in the midst of adopting Zoom for a lot of our activities and we're mid changeover. So the logins become a problem, <laughs> but I could get in through the web client. Google meet slash hangouts is uh, doing great by the way. <laughs> so I think uh, I know there's been a lot of interest by different people to explore other options. So if uh, anyone has time to start that process, I forget who it was who volunteered to do a little bit of a dive. Um, this is yet another instance where it would be would have been nice to do that. Yeah, I think the only requirement for us is um, it has to have some YouTube upload integration or some process to do that. I was able to confirm with Amy, actually, uh, it's our favorite rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> uh, so I was able to confirm with, with Amy that um, they're actually uploading the videos after they're just grabbing the recording and, and uploading it rather than the, the real time streaming that the Node.js Foundation does. So um, all we need is an artifact, actually, that uh, Amy can grab and, and uh, upload to YouTube. So yeah, and, and uh, it looks like Google Hangouts slash Meet has exactly the same thing. You said it has a functionality to do that as well. So I don't, I don't see a real, um, yeah. So I, I, I think we would be set if we went with that option. Although if people have other suggestions, we could certainly do some quick assessment and pick something better. Uh, possible feedback on using some of the Google tools is that uh, some participants from some organizations may have trouble participating with that on their corporate accounts uh, slash uh, corporate laptops. Yeah, I mentioned this last, this Underwood, I mentioned this last time that uh, finance people are going to block it because of DLP. So I don't think Google's the best option for this. I like the platform myself, but. <clears throat> Okay, well, we can have that discussion on the issue tracker. We, we need to do more than just, it shouldn't be one person pushing something. We should really try to lay out the pros and cons and like to collectively come to a reasoned decision about what to do, of which, I mean, an option is to stay where we are, but obviously uh, it's frustrating for me to call in and try to attend a presentation that I'm not gonna be able to see the slides on. Yeah, I put the issue in the, in the um, chat. Thanks, Brandon. How are we doing, Mark? Yeah, he's trying to dial in now. He just okay. sent me the deck. Hmm. He's a bit disappointed. He's got animations in his slide deck. I'm gonna to have to figure out how to queue him up so we're in sync as he's talking through this. <laughs> no animation.
So Paul is suggesting that we consider rescheduling because his mobile device doesn't have enough power and he's going to have to use his phone in an environment that's a little bit noisy. <laughs> All this working from home, right? So he's a bit, uh, he's struggling right now, try to get everything lined up. He sent me the deck, but I haven't received it yet. So I don't know if it's uh, too big, but he's uh, f frantically trying to set all, everything up. All those animations. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> Wanted to make a good impression, see? All right, yeah, I, I, let's try and reschedule this and, and then maybe we can try and work out the, the kinks of this before the next meeting. Um, okay, so I think we will convert this session to a working session. I, I know we didn't really have that much planned yet. Um, so one thing I think we can probably talk about is, um, uh, eating, are you on the call? I was not sure whether maybe we, we can show a little bit about the security landscape stuff. I'm on here. Can you hear me okay? Yep, perfect. You, um, want, you want to pull that up or? Yeah, I can put that. Just give me a second. I see someone join. I'm not sure whether that's, that's Paul. I can add the link to the issue on GitHub. Let me share my screen. And here I can share the link on the issue as well too. Okay. All right. Um, so the, this issue is on security landscape iteration two, um, security landscape two. So this is something that um, we started working on a while ago and more recently um, after getting through some of the security assessments and, and sandbox projects, um, we decided to kind of jumpstart this again. So uh, Justin, Eating and myself are looking at um, Security Landscape 2. And the idea here is to uh, create a security landscape um, which we feel would be um, provide more ease of use than what we have today. Uh, today we have a list of categories which just say that, okay, here are some things that um, like authorization, logging, monitoring, um, but it doesn't really provide um, many actionable um, items that people can use it and then apply it to their own security solutioning or their, their own architecture. Um, so the idea here is to create somewhat of a, uh, a set of processes that um, will map onto projects in the CNCF security landscape. Um, and one example that we started with here is being able to do it on um, applications. So how do you create a cloud native, a secure cloud native application? Um, so this goes to the pipeline flag. Like, okay, developers commit code, what are the threats, what are the, the preventions and mitigations and so on, right? Um, and the other part of it that we think that is um, also equally important is how do you, um, how do you express this information? How do you make it um, easily digestible and interpretable? And so as part of this work is kind of creating an interface uh, which um, makes it easy to, to, to navigate um, these, these items. So um, 
eating is I gonna I have to download this right. So Eden put together this uh, mock-up and um, PowerPoint of example of what the, the landscape would look like. Uh, do you want to take it from here? Yeah, you have to. Are you did you download it? Yeah, I think this is it, right? Oops. Yeah. Okay. So this pretty much was trying to get an idea on when you said you wanted that to be interactive on what you mean, right? So that this is a prototype. <laughs> um, I did that quickly in... Um, uh, PowerPoint to show that uh, that's kind of the user experience. Only the first two boxes clickable based on from the PowerPoint you have, uh, Brandon. Okay. And uh, if you click on that box, like click for more details, and that shows up in that. And then if you click on the close box or you click on code review, you will go to code review. Cool. So okay. Okay. From here, if you go to code review, and it will pop up the code review box. If you click on for more details it will pop up the detail for the code review. And so that's, um, I was wanting to make sure with a prototype, that's the kind of experience, your user experience you're looking for and the interactiveness. Right, I, I think this is this is what we had in mind. Um, so, so this is great. And I never knew you could do a lot of this in PowerPoint. <laughs> Um, yeah, the animation and uh, transition however, is an easy, quick way to kind of get uh, a prototyping together and you don't have to mess with uh, or designing it or out yet in web. Um, you can even do a video a clips within uh, PowerPoint. I did one of my uh, class project video uh, via PowerPoint too, since I don't have those, uh, you know, uh, mil cost million dollar type of video. <laughs> editing stuff. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So this this is great. I think it, it kind of like uh, shows um, what kind of we, is envisioned by the the landscape. Um, and I think this this is probably a good time to 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 get some feedback um, from everyone about um, what do you think about this? Uh, what are some things that you you also, think would be... there, I would say, so number one, the clicking user experience, right? Second of it, you kind of have to do think about how dynamic this is. Because building something like this, pop a box and hiding it and um, moving it based on where you click in a static HTML is not that hard. But if you're like a, uh, all the boxes, all this material going to be uh, change frequently, then you will have to want to design a uh, web app that is data driven and have a uh, design agree funds separately from there. And then wherever data you plug in, there's much more upfront development, but then for the longer run, if you expect to like, for example, uh, quickly add another box in this flow as an example, then you don't need to deal with the um, front end side of it. You can just add the data in the uh, behind the scene. And then uh, all of the data correlated for the pop-up that it will show up and then uh, also correlate to when you click for more details that pop up to show up. So um, I, I saw your your PowerPoint and it was just have, uh, I took this particular one to just show the uh, clicking and the interactiveness. But if you want to take this and make it into a uh, fully functioning website, you kind of have to think about on, okay, how you plan to use it and how you plan to update it because it may be mm -hmm. worthwhile to invest upfront on that development, separating your front end and your back end and have a data source. Um, then uh, start with like a, a static pages, then you later have to make a lot of changes just <laughs> to, for example, like change one, one a data point or a single word, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree on that. Uh, especially when we start adding more boxes to the processes and having kind of more complex um, processes like like I think one thing that Justin was saying is that sometimes you could have loops for things that you have to to iteratively run um, so having also that like how do you kind of go back and forth like everything fits on the screen nicely here um, how do you go back and forth like between the processes, would it kind of just be a sliding window or something like that? Um, 
I think that's, that's something also that that we can think about. So, are there any thoughts on um, kind of this landscape versus um, the traditional several categories and projects on th those categories? How bi big do you think this is going to be? I mean, how much? How many things are? There? How, you know, what does it look like from a sort of top level view? Because I'm kind of curious as to how how navigatable and understandable yeah. it is once it's all done, rather than a piece of it so um initially when we were kind of putting out the content i think we we came up with a few um uh, ideas right so so i think there would be a couple of so, so i think that there's two parts of it one of it is there will be a couple processes like how do you set up the infrastructure securely and then one is how do you develop an app securely? And then one is maybe logging and monitoring and things like that. Um, so one of it is that generally the processes would be categorized enough that you could probably zoom in and zoom out on um, different hierarchies. Um, another thing that uh, we, we talked about is also being able to filter by a, a certain a role, for example, um, uh, if some a particular, all right. So say like a particular role. Say I'm a developer. I'm gonna hit um, the filter by only developer um, roles, and what it's gonna do is just just gonna show me everything that's relevant to a developer. And then if I'm an operator, um, I, I'm only gonna be able to see. Um, things that are relevant to operators. Um, so I think the navigation is going to be a challenge. I, I don't think we have a good idea on what it's going to look like yet, just because um, um, it's, it's hard to visualize. But I think that's, that's definitely something that, that we will have to work on. Uh, operator view is that more the CD aspect, the deployment aspect, and then the post deployment steps. Yeah. So, so yeah, exactly. So that that would kind of be like a configuration of the cluster, configuration of um, um, and monitoring of the the views in the cluster. I mean, these are not um, like we we haven't really wrote down like what what we think would be the filters and what they would look like. So, I think a lot of this is is still open to feedback. Um, you know, whatever people would find useful. Yeah. I, I will say that uh, at a high level, our goal here is to organize this by the steps that are occurring in a normal like application deployment lifetime. And so if there's things that we're missing there or things that, you know, need to be expanded on or done differently there, that would be really helpful to see. Um, because that's sort of like the, the, the print, the organizing principle is we, um, is to put things that way because then it's very easy to tell where security systems go because they either are or aren't used at different steps. Um, so yeah. All right. Yeah, and if you have any other comments, um, we'll link the issue, um, and feel free to comment on that. By the way, Paul, I see you. You've you've managed to, to finally make it. <laughs> Hi, Brandon. I am so I am so sorry uh, to to everyone um, for the hassle. Um, I I have no idea what happened, but pretty much every way I tried to get into the Zoom meeting, despite having joined this meeting before despite having the client on my machine, um, it was not letting me in. The, the, the route that eventually worked was signing in with Facebook, believe it or not. Um, so 
<laughs> so so it eventually let me in as a as a Facebook uh -huh. user. Um, but no other, no other process problem. worked. We have heard this problem, but this is the first time that I've heard of it being like the this direct. <laughs> so, so. But, but, but I am here. I, I know there has been talk of rescheduling because things were getting to, to truly desperate measures and I thought there was just no way for me to realistically do this. And I hate messing people around. Um, but if you do still have space in the schedule, I think I am now good to go. Um, how long are you going to... Uh take for this. Uh, I think it's um, kind of a matter of whether we can fit it in within half an hour and have time for uh, questions. So, um, so it would probably be it would probably be a stretch to do it within half an hour and have time for, for questions. Um, uh, I, I can try to speed up through some parts of it. We can we can give it a go and, and see how we go. Um, can I leave that up to you as, as chair? Yeah I, yeah, I think it's it's probably going to be better if we, we schedule another time, especially, I think, I'm not sure if um, some people on the call that would have wanted to see the presentation have, have dropped off. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in, in that case, no, no worries. I, I um, would be available next week um, if we can punt it to next week, if there's nothing else. Uh... Yeah, I think next week should be fine. Uh, I don't think there's anything in the schedule right now, but uh, I'll, I'll just check on that after this. Agreed on next week. Yeah. All right. So I, I think um, let's see whether there's any other issues to talk about. I think um, um, Emily and I and the um, we're looking at some issues and mark some issues in um in the in github to say you know what are some of the good things that uh, we feel like uh, new members could take a look at um, i think we will cover that in the next working session i don't think that's ready yet So I think if we understand any other things that people want to talk about, we can probably end this, this call earlier today. All right, cool. So it seems like everyone gets half an hour back. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Be right. well. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.